Hello, uh, again, welcome to this uh, virtual public meeting regarding the safety improvements on John Young Parkway and the westbound I-4 off-ramp. My name is Marcus Lisicki, and I'm serving as the DOT project manager for the project. The design firm completing this, the design for the project is Comprehensive Engineering Services, or CES. Uh, Matthew Gibbs, he's here with us today. He's the design project manager, and his team will pr be providing the technical information for the project. In just a moment, we will begin a presentation about the plan improvements. Following the presentation, we will address questions as time allows. We will also respond to questions in writing after the meeting. We encourage you to download a copy of the presentation from the handout section during the webinar. And we also uh, will be placing a recording of this meeting on our project webpage at www.cflroads.com. If you search project number 4445-1, to navigate to the page, it'll take you to that direct link. As mentioned previously, um, just note that all attendees will remain in listen-only mode for the meeting. And if you'd like to ask a question during the meeting or make a comment, please type it in the question pane. You are also invited to submit questions or comments using the comment form that you can download during the meeting or by contacting myself directly by phone or email. We will be displaying our contact information during the presentation. I would now like to turn it over to the CES design project team to begin the presentation. Thank you, Marcus. This meeting is being held in accordance with state and federal regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting the FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, Jennifer Smith, by phone at 386-943-5367 or by email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl. Dot US, or the FDOT statewide Title VI coordinator, Jacqueline Paramore, by phone at 850-414-4753, or by email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. The purpose of the safety project is to relieve congestion and merging conflicts by reducing weaving maneuvers involving traffic traveling south on John Young Parkway and traffic ex exiting westbound I-4. This will be accomplished by physically separating traffic coming from the westbound I-4 off-ramp from traffic on southbound John Young Parkway heading to westbound LB McLeod Road. The limits of this project are along John Young Parkway or County Road 423 from the westbound I-4 off-ramp to LB McLeod Road in Orange County. The proposed improvements are shown here in black and include a portion of the westbound I-4 off-ramp and southbound John Young Parkway from north of the interchange to LB McLeod Road. There are three typical sections along this project corridor. The first typical section is on John Young Parkway from just north of the westbound I-4 off-ramp to just north of LB McLeod Road. The proposed typical section will provide a raised median that transitions to the new seven foot wide traffic separator between the two right turn lanes. The bike lane, the three through lanes, and the left turn lane to eastbound LB McLeod Road will remain. The posted speed within this typical section will remain at 45 miles per hour. The second typical section is the westbound I-4 off-ramp that we will call Ramp A, which includes a portion of the ramp before the lanes split at the island. This image represents the existing typical section. The project will restripe 
the lanes and add new pavement markings to guide proper navigation onto John Young Parkway and LB McLeod Road. The advisory speed within this typical section is 35 miles per hour. The third typical section is another area of the westbound I-4 off-ramp that we will call Ramp AA, connecting to John Young Parkway. The proposed typical section will widen and reconstruct a curved island to separate the free flow right turn lanes from the new dedicated right and left turn lanes at the signal. The advisory speed within this typical section is 35 miles per hour. Other roadway improvements included with this project include milling and resurfacing southbound lanes of John Young Parkway and westbound I-4 off-ramp, pavement widening, and modification of the curbed island on John Young Parkway and LB McLeod Road to accommodate large truck traffic turning right. Existing drainage patterns will be maintained and new inlets will be added within the proposed pavement widening areas. Proposed pedestrian upgrades include updating curb ramps at impacted locations to meet current American with Disabilities Act or ADA standards and adding a pedestrian median refuge on the north side of the John Young Parkway and LB McLeod Road intersection. Pavement markings will be refreshed throughout the project limits and existing signing along the project corridor will be upgraded to correspond with the proposed improvements. Wrong way driving, signing, and pavement markings will be added at the westbound I-4 off-ramp. Lighting upgrades include relocation of the light pole at the westbound I-4 off-ramp island due to proposed widening. Pedestrian intersection lighting upgrades are planned at the westbound I-4 off-ramp connection to John Young Parkway and at the intersection of southbound John Young Parkway and westbound LB McLeod Road. The proposed signalization upgrades include smart signal technology at John Young Parkway and the westbound I-4 ramp, Clearway, and LB McLeod signalized intersections. The proposed Intelligent Transportation System, or ITS, upgrades will enhance traffic flow and incident management capabilities by providing real-time data and video information to FDOT, providing the ability to monitor and alert vehicle traffic, helping in emergency management, and connecting to a statewide communication network. Design is expected to be completed in December of 2021 at a cost of about $600,000. Construction is expected to start in summer 2022 at an estimated cost of about $1.6 million. All improvements will take place within the exist existing FDOT right-of-way. For the latest project information, please visit www.cflroads.com. Click on the magnifying glass and search project number 444175-1, then click the project name. There are several ways you can submit your questions or comments to us. You may type your comment or question into the question pane during this virtual public meeting or download a comment form from the handouts section and send it back to the address shown on the form. You may also email FDOT project manager Marcus Lisicki at marcus.lisicki at dot.state.fl.us or use the Ask a Question button on the project page at www.cflroads.com. The FDOT welcomes comments anytime. Comments received by October 23rd of 2020 will be included in the record for this meeting. The project team will respond in writing to questions and comments. We will now begin the question and answer portion of the meeting. If you have a question or comment, please type it into the question pane. Carolyn? Thank you, Sherry. 
I know we went through that kind of kind of quickly. Um, so if you do have any questions, we will get those started. Um, Matthew, I'm going to go ahead and turn my screen over to you so that you can call up the KMZ file, which might, might help to explain some things. I can't hear you, Matt. Can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Um, we do have a question that was asking if it was possible to have two right turn lanes rather than just one. Are you guys able to see my screen? Not yet. Huh. Okay, let me try it again. There we go. Now we okay. can. I don't know what happened. Okay, sorry about that. All right. Uh, okay. Is it possible to have two right turn lanes rather than just one? Uh, I'm not sure if that means up at the signal, because we have the two right at LB McLeod, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So let me let me just zoom out so everybody get their bearing. Uh, so this is I-4. Uh, this is the westbound off ramp that comes over here, um, and right now, uh, or and currently comes into the signal and also loops around to LB McLeod. So if we zoom in here, we have our proposed design overlaid on the aerial. Uh, we do have the single right turn lane uh, right now. Um, when we were looking through it uh, from DOT's concept design that they had gone through and looked at uh, traffic volumes and studied the intersection, um, the one right turn lane was um, the one that was provided as part of their concept plans so that originated from DOT. Uh, whether there can be a second right turn lane, that is something we'd have to look into further. Uh, Carolyn, do you want me to go yeah. through the, just go through the questions or? Um, why don't you go ahead and go through your KMZ um, again and, and just kind of reiterate a little bit about okay. what we talked about in the presentation. Sometimes it's easier to see. Yeah, yeah, no problem, that. good idea, um, good idea. So again, as you come off the off-ramp here, um, the westbound I-4 off-ramp, currently you can come around here and uh, you, there's a weaving maneuver that occurs here with southbound John Young Parkway traffic and the I-4 off-ramp traffic. Uh, this median, uh, these yellow and white lines represent a solid median and it transitions to a traffic separator here. Um, the traffic separator prevents that weaving maneuver from happening. So if you're exiting I-4 and you wanna go south on John Young, you would come up to the traffic signal uh, and then you could turn right and head southbound on John Young. If you wanna still go to LB McLeod, business as usual, you come around here, this lane will be maintained. Now, if you are on southbound John Young and you wanna to go to LB McLeod, you still have the option here to merge into this uh, right turn lane after the clear way signal located here. Uh, so you would come across here and you would be able to go uh, southbound on John Young. So there are two right turn lanes here. So I'm not sure, uh, Susan, if that was the location you were recommending or asking about two right turn lanes or if it was back at the signal for the off ramp located here. She said um, two right off the ramp. Okay. So that would be here. So yes, um, that would be something we'd have to do some further investigation on with DOT. Uh, based upon the traffic demand and everything that was coming up uh, from the study, uh, the one right turn line was the recommendation at this time. Okay. Um, we also had a question about um, potentially moving the pedestrian crossing um, to the clearway signal. Uh, is that this crossing right here, I'm assuming? Um, the, the only concern with that is this is a free flow uh, um, lane. So as you come off of I-4, this is not signalized as you come through this lane. Uh, the only place it is signalized is located here. Uh, we are actually switching out the traffic signal head to be a one um, green, continuous green uh, signal head for this direction. So that would be, um, that would prevent that from happening at that location. Okay, um, I also had a question about asking whether this project 
was separate from the I-4 Ultimate and I-4 Beyond the Ultimate projects? And the answer is yes. This is a completely separate project um, from the I-4 Ultimate project. <clears throat> Another question that we had, um, should the pedestrian island at LB McLeod be expanded to include the Gord area? Uh, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. So right now, there is a gore area here. Um, so what we are doing is we are widening this, this median out to cover most of that gore area. Um, during the traffic study that we were referring to earlier, uh, DOT did note that people were coming up into this gore area and using it as a lane jump. So we're preventing that um, by expanding this island uh, to cover that area. Thank you. Um, the um, question about the right turn lane um, at the signal on the off ramp, will it be a no turn on red? Uh, I'll, I'll have to double check on that. I don't think it will be, um, but I'll have to double check on that. And like all these comments, we will provide responses, written responses to them. So yes, we'll, we'll follow up on that one. Okay, um, and also about pedestrian lighting, at the crossing at the ramp, um, it, will there be lighting there? Uh, so we are proposing to do intersection pedestrian lighting at this crosswalk as well as this crosswalk. So, so both yes. of the crosswalks up at the ramp? Yes. Um, kind of, again, with the, the crosswalks, um, if it was moved, the, the crossing would not be on the curve. So that, that's just a comment about relocating that. Um, I am going to just remind everyone, if you do have a question or comment, um, we encourage you to, to go ahead and type it in the question pane, um, or you may download the comment form from our handout section um, or contact us afterward. Um, I'm gonna take the screen back just for a second, Matt, and just put up the contact information again. Okay. Um, oops. So um, that's the contact information for Marcus, our FDOT project manager and our consultant, um, Matthew Gibbs. So if you are um, don't want to enter the question in tonight, you can give Marcus a call at 386-943-5542 or email him at marcus.lisicki, that's M-A-R, C U S dot L I S I C K I at D O T dot state dot F L dot U S or consultant manager Matthew Gibbs by phone at 407 423 1600 extension 226 or by email at M G I B B S at cescivil.com. Also, you can find information on our CFL Roads website, um, www.cflroads.com. Um, this, the presentation um, exhibits and a recording of this meeting will be available on that page um, for viewing at a later time. From that page, there is also an ask a question button um, and Marcus's contact information is there as well. So you can go there to get more information and, and get back to us. If you have any friends that were not able to attend this evening that have questions, please encourage them to reach out to us. Um, I do see, right now I don't see any more questions that have come in. So we'll just give it just a couple minutes to see if any more come in. And I'm going to go ahead and give the screen back to you, Matt. Okay. Are you guys able to see the Google Earth? Yes. Okay. 
Um, well, we're, we'll give it a couple more minutes. Like you mentioned, Carolyn, um, while we're waiting, I can go ahead and go a little bit more detail. So if you're coming off a clear way, it's still gonna have a signal here, still gonna be able to turn left, right, and you're also still gonna be able to get onto LB McLeod um, through this uh, right turn line coming through here. So I just want to iterate that that will be maintained. Um, one of the other things that was in the presentation is we are extending this median nose here for any pedestrians at this island. They'll have a, a pedestrian refuge area um, uh, as you cross this crosswalk. So we'll have that as well. Um, as Brian had asked earlier, we, we're extending this island out um, and we're reconfiguring this island slightly to help with the turning movements through here. Um, you know, as we mentioned in there, we're going to be maintaining drainage. Uh, this traffic separator does have uh, a few slots in here to allow the water to, to go through as needed. Um, let's see, as we come up. We did get a question that was asking if the left turn into the Isle of Catalina neighborhood, um, a clear way, can be a blinking green turn signal since the red light is so long. Yes, uh, that's uh, that's. A good question. Uh, I know DOT has received a question similar to this prior to this meeting. Um, we actually uh, discussed that a few days ago. Uh, since this signal is an off-system signal that is maintained by the city, uh, that request has been sent on to the city and it is my understanding that that is being actually uh, analyzed right now by the city. Um, if they come back and it does favor that, we will certainly implement it. Um, right now it's in a mode called protected only, which prevents vehicles from turning left, as mentioned, when it's red. Um, usually when it's that way, I'd like to iterate, usually uh, that means that there's a, a history of something that caused concern to make it that way. But again, it is being reviewed. Um, and if it is comes back that there is uh, an option to do that um, and it's a, a safe option, we can look at including it with this project. Terrific. Um, also comment that um, perhaps there's some issues with the crosswalk signal on the northbound John Young Parkway um, at LB McLeod Road. Okay, we can North certainly so we can check that out. Yeah, because this project is a little bit further out for construction, we can certainly forward that on to maintenance and notify them, and uh, hopefully they'll get out or they should get out there uh, in the near future to get that fixed. So we'll go ahead and notify them of, of that. Thanks very much. Um, not seeing any new questions yet, so we'll just give it a few minutes um, in case okay. anyone else thinks of something that they would like to ask. Now, one thing I would like to note is we are installing um, smart signals at uh, the off ramp here at Clearway and LB McLeod. Um, what that'll allow DOT to do is monitor the traffic sit, uh, situations out there. So um, that is giving a little bit more information, feedback to DOT and the city and the county in regards to how these signals are gonna perform with the new configuration. So I did wanna mention that as well. Um, there is a question asking if the drainage map might be available um, and that the neighborhood um, does experience some street flooding on okay. Clearway and Gulfstream at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll have to check into it. I don't know if we did a uh, an actual drainage map as part of this project because of the limits or the, the minimal work we are doing. I can certainly take a look at that um, and verify if we do have one, it might be just a drainage working map. Um, and I will run it through the channels and see if we can share that through DOT. But I do wanna reiterate all the drainage patterns are gonna be maintained as they currently are. Um, and we're putting in additional inlets where we're doing uh, you know, pavement widening, such as here at the off ramp. We have these flumes that are gonna capture the water and put it into this depressed area where there's a ditch bottom inlet. Um, and then 
we'll be um, adding this, which is actually a uh, pervious area. So th there'll be grass in here that when the rain hits, it's less water that runs off. Um, and then these drainage slots will help maintain the existing drainage patterns. Um, she notes that right now some of the gutters get clogged um, with trash. So. Yeah, uh, the, again, we can relay that to maintenance uh, when we give them the information about the, the North Lake crosswalk. We can relay that there's some debris out there and can they clean up the gutters. Um, unfortunately, uh, when people litter, that happens, but we can certainly put a, a let, let maintenance now. Thank you. Um, I do want, if we have any folks that are um, that called in on the phone uh, and are on listen-only mode and unable to type in a question, um, we, we do urge you to please get in touch with us after the meeting. Um, again, you can contact Marcus or Matthew. Uh, Marcus's phone number again is 386-943-5542. He is the FDOT project manager. And Matthew's phone number is 407-423-1600 extension 226. Um, we do encourage you to reach out and give us a, a phone call if um, you are listening on the phone and unable to type in a question. And right now I'm not seeing any new questions come in so we can give it just a couple more minutes and see if anyone has any more that they would like to share. You can, again, you can follow the progress of this meet, um, project on our CFL Roads website, www.cflroads.com. If you search, um, hit the magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner and search this project number, 444-175-1, um, you will get to the project page. I am not seeing any more questions. Um, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the question box. We will be responding to all of the questions that were submitted in writing after the meeting. And I just wanted to note one, one thing, Carolyn, and is in regards to maintenance requests, um, the DOT performs that work within the DOT right away. Uh, the Johnny and the Parkway is a, a county road. Um, and so there are some limits of where the DOT can work. And so those requests would maybe be uh, separate for the county, but will of course be taken into consideration when we receive these comments. Um. Marcus and Matthew, I do not see any more questions that have come in. Um, we can wait just a few more minutes if you'd like. Oh, I, I lied. One just came in. It says, grateful for this project, traffic um, becomes clogged in that location frequently. So thank you very much for that comment. Okay. does not look like we have any more questions that are coming in. Um, again, we do encourage you to give us feedback. You can download a copy of the presentation um, from our handout section. So you can take that and look at it more carefully and, and get back to us at a later time if you have additional questions. Um, Matthew, I'm going to take the screen back and just throw up your contact information again. Okay. So folks can see um, that information. Again, we um, always accept comments into the FDOT. Um, if you 
get your comments back to us in a few weeks, we can include that in the record for this meeting. I think we were asking for them by October 23rd if possible, um, but comments are always accepted. Okay, well, thank you everyone for your questions and comments. We've got some good material there. Your attendance is, again, appreciated. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact myself anytime. Uh, the information is there on the screen on CFL Roads, as mentioned before. Um, hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus.